Okay, so today we are talking about sovereignty. Now, you may have heard me talk about sovereignty before in the context of, you know, creating a world that you want to live in, creating that space around you. It's the power to be able to say yes and the power to be able to say no um, to what you want. And, you know, for a lot of people, it can be very challenging to even admit that we have things that we want and we're not just all the same wanting all the same things as everyone else so it's a bit of a journey but when you start down that journey what I've discovered for myself is that when I'm in my sovereignty when I'm in my sweet spot that that is such a powerful place to be I mean you know of course people should be treated fairly but different people want different things and different people have different talents. We each have a different genius. We each have a different magic within us. Whether that is that you're an amazingly talented communicator, whether your heart's full of love, whether you're the most skilled brain surgeon on the earth, whether you're a, a super amazing athlete, whether you're a great parent, it doesn't matter. Like it could be more than one of those things, but but there's something about you that's unique and special. Anyway, I talk a lot about this uh, in context of the individual, but how does it work when two people come together? Um, you know, because a lot of people, when they hear about sovereignty, they think that what it's saying is, I am a king and I get my way. <laughs> And it can be, but it can be much more than that because what I've noticed with my experiment with sovereignty is actually I love to hang out in other people's kingdoms. You know, it's like a space, like when I go kite surfing at Breeze Club here, it's Danny's sovereign space. He's the boss man. What he says goes. And I'm welcome to turn up there and do my thing and have a great time. But it's his space and it's his rules. And 99% of the time I'm like, yeah, totally agree. But then, you know, there's been times where um, like once I got, well, more than once I got stuck out on the ocean. And by the time I'd come back, Danny had left and he locked up and my phone was inside and I hadn't said, please, could you take it out? And he was a bit bummed because I he'd been waiting for me and wanted to go hang out with his family. And so you can see how, you know, I'm in my kingdom out on the ocean and he's in his kingdom here at Breeze Kite Surfing. And it, it can take a little bit of communication to iron those things out. So we've now got an arrangement worked out. Whereas if I'm stuck and don't come back, he can... Um, we, we got an arrangement. I won't go into all the details, but, you know, we got an arrangement that works out as a win-win. And this is what it's about. You know, sometimes compromise is a fact of life. You know, sometimes you can't, everyone can't all get everything. But what I have found is that being in sovereignty, being in, it's like, what do you really want in your heart? Like, what would you love? And when the other person also is honest about what they would love, this can create some real magic. And this can then say, okay, well, what are the creative possibilities that we could come up with? Like, how can we, you know, how can you get what you want and I get what I want? And I wanna share a little story about something that happened in, a, in an intimate relationship with a beautiful friend where, we worked something out. We figured something out between us. So, uh, yeah. So whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this on the replay, I hope that this is something useful, uh, something that can really be a, be a very simple tool. And it, it has some kind of steps to it. You know, in some ways, powerful relationships can just be very easy and can be can flow. But there's some things that can really help that to happen. And so I want to acknowledge that this information has been passed to me 
uh, for, it's come to me from a number of different sources. You know, it's one of the, the king or queen is one of the four, four archetypes of king, magician, warrior, and lover. So working with the king archetype is a very powerful way to be in sovereignty. And actually, when you're in the king archetype, it's not a case of saying, yeah, this is my kingdom, fuck you, I'll have what I want. It's actually more a case of, hey, in this kingdom, these are the rules. And if you like it, enjoy. And if not, see you later. So for example, on my profile page on Facebook, where some of you are watching this right now, I'm very, very keen to have high quality conversations. And if someone is receiving energy or they say something and I'm like, yeah, wow, that's cool. But mostly it's like, if someone's catching what I'm putting down and they're like, thank you, or they're like, yeah, I'm with you, then those are the people that I'm here to serve, yeah? And then there's other people who are like, they're like, oh, you should listen to my opinion and you should be open to other ideas and you should, we should be. And I'm like, hey, you know what? Maybe sometimes, but this post right here, I'm not sharing this to have a debate or a conversation. And then, you know, if you want that, this is not the place for you. Please, if you don't agree, if it upsets you, please don't follow me. But if, you know, if it inspires you, great. If not, tune into a different channel. You know, there's seven billion plus different channels that you can you can follow whoever you want to follow so i'm not for everyone right so it's like and i i make sure that it is a safe space where people can catch that and receive that and they're not going to get trolled or someone saying oh you're an idiot no leave not in my space not in my kingdom anyway let's talk about co-sovereignty because this is much more juicy than me talking about my facebook page which um, I am feeling really good about, by the way. Anyway, so co-sovereignty, how does it work? Here's the example. Okay, so my friend was feeling annoyed or frustrated or unhappy because whenever we talk, she feels like it has to be deep and meaningful. And I am like, coming at this and I'm like, when we connect, when I connect with another human being, I want this to be in a very clean space. So, you know, if there's some stuff bubbling up, if there's like some charge, if one person has a story or there's some projections, I want to clear that. I want to clear that. So we're starting from a nice clean canvas so we can create beautiful, powerful relating dynamics. And actually, these two months are about exactly that for me. April and May, those two months, they're one of my five themes, and it's conscious relating and sovereignty. So it's about my relationship with myself and other people, right? Anyway, so she's like, oh, why do we always have to do the work when we're talking? Can't we just have some fun? And I'm like, yeah, we can have a, a beautiful connection, but we've got to clean up what's in the space. And as you can imagine, there's a little bit of a conflict there. It's like, I'm like, we can have some fun once we've done the work, but then there's always more work to be done. And my friend's like, ah, oh, but why can't we just have some fun? And then there won't be as much work to do because all this stuff won't get stirred up. And you can see it's kind of like, you know, it's very easy for the ego to come in. And I'm like, well, I want to have deep and meaningful and transformative relationships and I want to go get into this depth, which is valid for me it's what I want that's my sovereignty um, and, sh and she can say yeah but I just want to enjoy my time connecting with you I just want to have feel like it's it's light and it's easy and it's fun and why does it always have to be so heavy and I'm like yeah but we're losing the important stuff because we're just having fun and and you can see how it's kind of like you know, it, we're missing each other. Now, what happens? I mean, the good thing about that is we've both said what we want. She wants to have a fun, easy, flowing relationship. And when I listen to that, when, I, when she expresses that from the heart and I listen in my heart, a beautiful thing happens because she said what she wants in her heart. And I'm like, hey, you know what? Yeah, I feel that. That sounds great. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then she she's heard me as well, and, and she's like, yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm up for going having some depth as well as, as you know, um, I I get that, I see where you're coming from. And what's a really beautiful thing is that uh, you know, I, this is this is some work that was passed on to me from William Whitecloud and another guy, Darren Eden broke down the different types of sovereignty for me and taught that to me. So I, I'm just passing this information on, but I've worked with it. You know, I've spent time exploring this and going deep into it. Um, and uh, but I just want to acknowledge the lineage that it's come through. So working with circles can be very powerful. So here we have these. Uh, wow, that is a big bug. <laughs> Sorry, bug. Um, Anyway, we've got these two big circles. I mean, you know, if you're a bit smutty, then you, you know what's your, what you're looking at, like a, like a pair of boobs. Um, but anyway, the per perfection happens when these two circles just touch. It's like the perfect cleavage, you know, but, but being cheeky apart, these two circles, like if the two circles are apart and they're not, they're not connecting, it doesn't work. It's like, I want this and she wants that, but and I'm not going to say it. So the first thing is when those circles come together is when we both speak what we want from our hearts. Now, it's very possible for one of the circles to try and swallow the other circle up and be like, if, you know, like, if we could just do clear up all this stuff, then we could have some fun. You know, that's heavy ego dominant, you know, one circle dominant. The other circle could dominate and be like, oh, but if we just, you know, let's just have some really good fun and never mind about that. You know, that's that other circle swallowing up the little circle. And neither of those is great. You know, it can also come into this space where there's they're like overlapping and it's kind of like, oh, we'll just sort of we'll, we'll compromise a bit and it's all codependent. But the magic happens when they just touch. And we found this real sweet spot and uh, it, it, it was creative. And my friend started dinging on her Tibetan bowl and playing on her drum. And then I pulled out this kazoo thing that is here to um, play to the cats. And, and it, it, it just shifted the dynamic and it just was a whole load of fun. And, you know, it's such a simple example. And, and you know, you may do this without even realizing that you're doing it and find fun ways to relate where both people get what they want. We had fun. We went deep. We cleared stuff, loads of stuff. We came back into a much more loving and connected space. And, but just remember, it started with both of us, you know, just expressing what do you want? Like, what is in your heart? What would you love? And then just going, well, maybe, just maybe, we could both have what we want, you know? I've been carried, it's so easy to carry this belief of, well, if you get what you want, I can't have what I want. And man, you see this so much where people just fight with each other. And it's actually, we both want things that are kind of very similar. And we can both have what we want and just get a bit creative. But it, 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 it starts with having the courage to actually say, hey, this is what I want. This is what I would love. And, and to do that, requires that you live in your space inside yourself as a king or a queen you know it's you've got to be in your sovereignty you can't be coming from a place of like ah, well i can't get what i want and wounded and trying to control the other person no you've got to be a king queen in your kingdom and you've got to acknowledge that the other person in front of you is also a king or a queen in their kingdom when those two kingdoms can connect, you get this much bigger space and it's super powerful. So I really learned something today. You know, the theory's all good and well, but this was putting the theory into practice. This was doing the work. And I, I just felt like I came into it with a whole lot of clarity, uh, a whole just being really honest and, and um, yeah, like, I sort of feel a bit sharing this example, like, you know, it might be a bit trivial or it might be a bit like, 
obvious? Am I over, am I mansplaining? But but it's a really powerful tool. So you know when when to use this tool. Look, communication is such an art, and I can be very good at communication, and sometimes I can really suck at communication. And the first communication is always with yourself. So get clear in yourself of what you really want in your heart's desire. And you can ask another person, well, what would you love? What would you really like? Because it can be so easy to get stuck in this. You said that and I didn't want this. And then that happened. And that's all the story and the drama. So living a magical life is about tapping straight into, well, what would you love? You know, what would I love right now? And what if that was possible? And how could we do that in a creative way? But you've got to be willing to ask that question or to share what it is. And you've got to be willing to be a bit creative. And uh, it was a great lesson for me in just lightening up and how things can flow without so much effort and trying to make the other person do what I want them to do. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap that up just there. Um, and i uh, love to read your comments. I hope this is super useful. And if you have any questions, let me know.